we're on the boat here that's going to shuttle us over to Gull Island. We're very excited. We're going to see rare and endangered species. And we're going to see an island that, uh, we're going to see an island that really has gone to the birds. As we approach Great Gull Island, we could actually hear the gulls from all the way out in the water. They definitely are the main population on that island. Hi, my name is Larissa Graham. I work for New York Sea Grant. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the Long Island Song Study. And today we are out on Great Gull Island, which is um, an island off of the tip of the eastern tip of Long Island. It's actually a Long Island Sound stewardship area, so those are areas that are important for two reasons. First, they're ecologically important, and then most of them are recreationally important too. This one's a little unique. Um, Great Gull Island has a ton of common terns and roseate terns. It's a really special place. And so today we're out here exploring with Helen Hayes, who runs, um, she's the manager of the island out here and runs um, the Great Gull Island project. And we thought it was a good opportunity to get everybody out here to just see what's going on in the island, what um, Helen's doing, and kind of the status of the population. <laughs> right now, we're walking looking for possible eggs and chicks and the birds are flying overhead. <laughs> Those are chick shelters. Chicks go in there for cover and shade. Anyway, um, I'm glad the bridge was open today and you all got here. Uh, we, we've been working here since 69, as was mentioned before. And um, when we started, there were about 3,000 pairs of commons and 3,000 pairs of roseates. There are now 9,500 pairs of commons, and there's still about, well, 1,300 pairs of roseates. We've done a little bit to try to expand areas for the roseates, but it's a lot of work and very slow. And they've used what we put out, but um, we need to do a lot more. And a man in Argentina, Esteban Bremer, traps 90% of the marked birds that he nets are from Gull Island. So that was kind of fun, too. Mm -hmm. These are the artillery ones, and you can see the no smoking sign on the back. Mm -hmm. the no room sign. And these stairs go up. What we do is once when the chicks hatch, um, you've marked the nest so you know what nest it is. The trap goes on over the nest. And then there's a door here. This is a, not a good trap. And you can see this little treadle down here. And there's a wire to the treadle so that the bird walks in to cover the chick and the door f shuts. And then the bird just goes and he sits on the chick, so it calms down. If we're really lucky, we'll get two pair every time we trap. And then we mark that off and we don't bother with that nest again. Everything on the island has been made by people um, who have volunteered their time. And so this is really a wonderful project a that's, been, that's been going on because of Helen's inspiration for over 40 years. Now, the nest, maybe mean that it's that's new. a common term um, egg. But they're all numbered so we know how many, you know, how many nests there are this year so far that they're 95. We just finished touring some of the barracks and the underground tunnels. And now we're up on the tower looking at the birds. <laughs> Not Joe, the birds. <laughs> no, not Joe. <laughs> Patrick Cummins, I'm Director of Bird Conservation for Audubon, Connecticut. And uh, I'm going to do a few bird calls for you here. 
Uh, the common turn, I call them the stuka of the uh, bird, bird world. They, they like to dive bomb you and they sound like I could do that better, but... And the um, Rosie had turned, uh, they like to say Jivik, 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 Jivik. Very distinctive. They also have a sound that sounds like um, you're ripping fabric. It's sort of like a... Roseates are a little different from commons. You'll see in this season that you're not going to see... The reason why they got the name is because a roseate is red or, or rose. And they have rosy breasts in breeding season. So you're not going to see so much of that, but what you will see is a lot of these birds are lighter in color and they're not all dark gray, they're light gray. And if you can, you look for the wings and the tail underneath. The tail feathers are longer than some of the wings on the roseate, whereas common it's reverse. <laughs> <laughs> This is another one. This is another one. He's just now beginning to lose his, his down, as you can see. He's getting some of his flight feathers in. Oh, uh, it's a common turn. It's in, it's, uh, we're on Great Golan. This is a Orville, which is a, the, sort of the code name for it. It's a fledgling. Uh, not. It's been out of the nest for a while. And uh, now, this is when they learn to fly. They have to start acting as individuals. The parents don't feed them now. They'll, they'll feed them at young ages, all in this plumage, but most of, as these birds get older, then they have to start fishing themselves. This is like sort of the teenage age for them. They're fledging out of the nest, not like the elephants that walk around, but they're learning to fly. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, David! Happy birthday, David!